Hey, welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I'm back yet again with yet another re retro shiz ish type video. We're going to be going from the past to now the future in the form of a new Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider Man the Animated Series Retro VHS 2 pack featuring Spider Man versus Carnage. This is the alien costume Spider Man, and of course, good old murderous. Cletus Cassidy from the animated series. The box set is meant to evoke an old VHS two-pack tape set, which is very cool. You got one and two along with Spider-Man and Carnage and some equally nice illustrations of the characters at the bottom. On the back side, very stark. It's a, it's a lot of gibberish, we'll just say, but you get photos of said figure with the classic logo right there. Now, in terms of pairing these two up, it's an odd two-pack to be sure. They have never met in the animated series. They were always one-off sort of deals. Carnage and let's say the animated Spider-Man would have been a nice set to kick things off, giving people a second chance at obtaining this Walmart exclusive Spider-Man or to go the other routes. You could have had the alien costume Spider-Man with Shocker, a bit of a repaint, more in terms of the animated series with some black lines and some red. I would have much rather preferred that. Plus, you could have called it the Get Back Here Shocker VHS 2-pack. The box is very nice, though. Love the illustrations. I love what they have brought forth here because it brings back all the nostalgia of Toy Biz in the form of those big old boxes, which were primarily for the vehicles and the playset. However, that being said, they're also very reminiscent of old Kenner boxes, right? From the Ghostbusters to Beetlejuice and everything in between. Yeah, it definitely harkens back to a lot of old toys from the old days. But we're going to do a little bit something different here today. Instead of going, here's how this moves, here's what it comes with. We're going to look at the animated series and then actually see how these stack up in terms of the figure and all of the accessories. So, this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a re-retro shiz look back at the past, which is now the future for the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man, the animated series VHS 2-pack featuring the alien costume Spider-Man and Carnage. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Now, please make sure you have your VHS tape players plugged in appropriately and then a blank VHS tape so you don't screw up the recording process like I did all the time when I was a kiddo. But kick it off with Carnage in the form of Venom Returns. This was part of Season 3, The Sins of the Fathers, Chapter 10. It opens up with Cletus Cassidy in his old orphanage, although they really don't say that. It's just heavily hinted at it. Robbie Robertson and Jay Jonah are discussing how the police are going to take down Cassidy. And in a very coy, subtle way, Robbie Robertson responds with, well, Cletus Cassidy has done things even the press wouldn't print. And I gotta say, seeing Cletus Cassidy, knowing about Carnage as a kid, and going, how are they gonna do this in a Saturday morning cartoon? Well, they certainly worked their way around it, we'll just say. And it was quite shocking when Spider-Man and Lieutenant Lee kicked down the door, and then... Cletus Cassidy was like, I have a giant bomb, and I'm going to blow you all to smithereens. And I got to say, it was a little bit shocking seeing that as a kid. Now, fast forward after Spider-Man saves the day, you got two kids in a park, and they run over to inspect something that has fallen from the sky. And lo and behold, we have the Prometheum X rock, which makes a return somehow, some way. That's not really explain and upon further inspection they get attacked by the symbiote now keep in mind you see a little red a little bit of blue what could be happening here is anyone's guess right forwarding over to ravencroft we have dr kafka and eddie brock discussing venom and how it was merely a delusion even though in the alien costume saga we had j3 communications uh, recording the whole thing just saying and as such Kafka and Eddie Brock conclude their session and Cletus Cassidy is brought in to have the cell right next to Eddie Brock now fast forward over to Baron Mordo and Dormammu yeah this one as a kid totally threw me for a loop I'm like what the heck is going on here now well it turns out Dormammu, yeah, he likes Venom. He likes the symbiote. And to kind of help him further his plans, he's going to return Eddie Brock 
to the symbiote. So Baron Mordo heads over to Ravencroft, makes a deal with Eddie Brock that if he serves Dormammu, yeah, they will uh, give him back the Venom symbiote. And he reluctantly agrees. Now, heading over to Peter Parker and Deborah Whitman, they meet up with Dr. Kurt Connors for a science experiment being put on by Stark Industries. That's where Kurt Connors points out Baron Mordo. Or how everyone else apparently knows him, Arden Broom. And that's a nice little exchange of Peter Parker going, well, if that's not Baron Mordo, I don't stick to walls. Now, while this is going on, a hypnotized host that discovered the Venom symbiote again in Central Park just walks into Ravencroft and delivers the Venom symbiote back to Eddie Brock, where Cletus Cassidy watches him escape and laments that he too desires his own symbiote. Back at Dormammu's lair, Dormammu reveals that he had a hand in everything that just transpired in bringing the symbiote back to Earth. Now, here's where it gets a little kerfluffled to me. You have two intensely magical people that somehow and for some reason need Venom to help Dormammu. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but oddly enough, guided the John Jameson probe back to Earth, right? <laughs> And it crashes in Central Park, which, okay, and if you remember correctly, the symbiote was webbed to that probe, but apparently it was still on the rocket, and then the probe, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, this has always kind of confused me, and then kind of going back and watching it and really going, okay, I think this is what they were going for. Mordo hypnotizes the two people before they go and inspect the symbiote rock, knowing full well that it was going to land there. All right, I'm just going to assume that they knew that. And as a parent to Mordo and us as of right now, there's only one symbiote, even though he hypnotized two people. Now, just keep that in mind until a little bit later. But right now, he has two hypnotized people, and he's the one that sent the girl over to Ravencroft to give Eddie Brock back the Venom symbiote. Now, shortly thereafter, Venom heads to the Stark exhibit and takes down all the security to secure the probe, which it's also called the probe, which is an interdimensional gateway machine that uh, Venom is going to take back to Dormammu to bring him into our world. And of course, when you know it, War Machine and Spider-Man show up. Now, I always thought this was kind of weird. John Beard, famous newscaster, part of Fox 11, did his own voice, played his own character on Spider-Man the Animated Series. And then, lo and behold, out of nowhere, he just goes, yeah, uh, this creature calls itself Venom, and it has all of Spider-Man's powers. Can you believe it? So, yeah, uh, I can't. Actually, how'd you know this, John Beard? Moving on, Mordo has transformed, for whatever reason, from Arden Broom back into his normal everyday street clothes and Dormammu kind of shows up even though he doesn't need his magical crystal here anymore and Mordo is just watching the fight. Mordo is a magical person. He's got a lot of magic powers. He could take down Doctor Strange if he wanted to but he's just watching the fight for whatever reason, right? And this is where he reveals to Mordo that he didn't just bring back Venom, he brought back two symbiotes because it just reproduced. And Mordo, and this is where, again, it gets confusing, goes, what, really? H how did this happen? Even though he hypnotized two people, it makes no sense. <laughs> However the timeline goes, because he had to have known something, right? I, it's just kind of weird. Anyways, so he sends the other guy with the other symbiote that he didn't know he hypnotized that had a symbiote or whatever, and that's carrying the Carnage symbiote over to Cletus Cassidy. It drops the guy. Cletus Cassidy makes a deal with Mordo to serve Dormammu. And bingo, bango, he's going to become Carnage. But before we jump into that, one of the accessories for the new Marvel Legends figure is a Cletus Cassidy head. These are all repainted, reused elements of prior Marvel Legends. So it doesn't have that unique animated look. It doesn't have that sweet Cassidy hair or those cool off-model eyes. But for Cletus Cassidy, for getting an unmasked, unsymbioted head, it's just okay. And that's really all I got for you. So moving on, he accepts the Carnage symbiote. Now keep in mind right here, and this is where it gets kind of weird, right? So Carnage goes from being a human, Cletus Cassidy, he's got five fingers, then he goes to four fingers, then when he starts using his powers, it can either go four fingers 
or five fingers. But again, one of the other accessories is this rather large hand. Now, I like what they did here, but I would have loved some extra black paint on it. I think that it's drastically missing that because as you can kind of see, it does have highlights of black and red on each of his pieces that he uh, manifests. So definitely think that some black would have been helpful, but it is very reminiscent of what actually happens in the animated series. Likewise with all his tendril goop. Now, in some cases, he has it more when the fighting starts happening, when he gets kind of all riled up. It's missing the black, much like the hand, but again, it's a nice aspect to correlate with the animated series. Now, moving back to the fight with War Machine and Spider-Man, Venom is kind of getting his butt handed to him when Carnage finally shows up. Now, this is where one of those pulled back just to reveal Cletus Cassidy's face while still having the Carnage symbiote. Now, that would have been a nice touch, and I really wish they would have gone that route. Also, keep in mind for Carnage, it's not exactly going to be on model, at least in the face. Now, looking at how they painted Carnage in conjunction with the animated series, Carnage is all over the place with the blacks and the reds, right? He kind of gets like a tiger stripe kind of deal at one point, and they have loosely done that. It's kind of there. It's reminiscent of it. It's okay. I'm glad they did it, but I think overall, he's missing a lot of black that could be a little bit more stylized, if you ask me. Especially on the chest, he kind of gets like a skeletal thing kind of going. And if you look in the animated series, again, it goes either which way. A lot more black when it wants to be there, but at least they had that kind of going for it. I really wish they had redone the head portrait to kind of give him more of those eyeballs in his whiteness of his eyes. And then maybe had a more closed mouth. Even though they painted the mouth pink, it's reminiscent of the animated series, but it's not exactly what we see again, unfortunately. Oddly enough, Carnage goes to steal the interdimensional probe. He does some Spider-Man webbing hands, which is interesting, right? And proceeds to fight War Machine, Spider-Man, and kind of sort of Venom, even though Venom, eh, he just still doesn't know what to really do. But some web thwipping Carnage shooting action, well, I wouldn't have really minded that. I think that that would have been kind of cool. And then to kind of correlate with his other accessory, right at the end of Venom Returns moving into the second parter, we're left with a little bit of a cliffhanger where Carnage is going to basically cut up Spider-Man and he makes an axe hand, which is more in tune of an actual axe. Whereas in this box set, we got the same reused piece. It does have a lot more black on it, which I am appreciative, but it's more almost a scythe kind of slash sickle than an actual ax. So again, I really wish that they could have put a little bit more oomph in the hands and the accessories just to really have it match the animated series. Because yes, Carnage in the animated series has more of an ax than anything. So now moving on, we're left with a little bit of a to be continued and we pick it up with Sins of the Father, chapter 11, Carnage. And I always loved how he said his name. Now, he gets a little bit more carnage in this particular episode where finally Baron Mordo decides to show up and you know, after he's been watching the whole fight and go, look guys, I'm going to need this uh, interdimensional probe, so uh, grab it and I need you to head back to Dormammu. Now, again, keep in mind with... Carnage's weird fingers, right? Now he's at three fingers. In the last part, we had four fingers. In some instances, we get five fingers, but he gets three fingers now. And I think that that would have been a nice little nod if we would have gotten extra hands in the form of you got four fingers or five, whatever you want to do, but then we got a three-fingered hands, right? That, I think, would have been really awesome. We get to see Tony Stark. He's like, man, you got to help my buddy War Machine. And uh, War Machine goes, yeah, he's going to send in Iron Man. So not only get War Machine, now we got Iron Man as guest stars. Back at Dormammu's little hideout cave, this is where the Marvel Legends and Collecting them really comes into play. So now we have Dormammu, which isn't exactly animated, I know. But then you got this weird twisted storyline that involves Carnage and Venom. So if you have the animated series Venom, it will go nicely with this Carnage. Venom goes, you know what? I'm out. I brought you the uh, interdimensional space probe thingy. And uh, yeah, see right here is a good inclination of how a carnage head portrait should have been done. A lot more round with these weird little kind of bug eye kind of things. I would have much rather 
preferred that. So Venom takes off, Carnage gets imbued with powers to kind of sort of replicate murdering people, right? So he takes their life force to be used to then swap with Dormammu that then you can bring him into our world. And when you see it, it is very maximum carnage, right? The old comic book. It's very cool. It's, again, getting around brutally murdering people for a children's Saturday morning cartoon. He gets Spider-Man, doesn't really do anything with him. He just kind of goes, oh, well, I can't bring any more souls. So uh, you're off the hook on this one, Spidey. Now, in a nice callback, we have Aunt May, we have Aunt Anna, and you have Mary Jane. And Eddie Brock shows up looking for Peter Parker, where Mary Jane, in a nice callback to the Alien Costume Saga, goes, look, I know you're not friends with Peter Parker. What do you want from him? And oddly enough, Eddie Brock totally sets Peter Parker up and just gives away the fact that Peter Parker totally digs you, even though Mary Jane's face looks like that in the freeze frame. So moving on from the information that Aunt May provided, he heads to the Daily Bugle, J3 Communications, drops in on J. Jonah Jameson, which he calls an appetizer, and full-on calls Peter Parker the main course and webs him to a camera to which in front of everybody there's a lot of people in this room if you watch closely peter parker just breaks out of the webbing and runs off right because nobody was watching that apparently anyways peter parker gets on his spider-man duds and then tries to track venom with his spider tracer by putting it on his leg but it's quickly destroyed like how is he going to trace him it's not like putting on the rhino right this thing, it's a, it's a living costume. It's going to know when it has something for it. So I just thought that was kind of like a dumb thing to do. Iron Man shows up. He battles Venom. It's pretty cool overall. And one little funny bit right here when they go, hey, you know, we got to go after him. Iron Man proceeds to fly through the ceiling. And then even though I'm pretty sure he's just jumping, uh, but it kind of looks like Spider-Man uh, also flies through the ceiling as well. Back at Dormammu's hideout, Carnage is putting all the souls and such into the urn, which they'll throw into the portal and then bring Dormammu back, right? Now, again, in terms of continuity and seeing how all these episodes go together, we have Dr. Kirk Connors. And Kirk Connors says, hey, uh, I got this alien costume piece from Spider-Man a few months ago, which to me means up to and around six months. So not only did we have the alien costume saga... We had all of the Neogenic Nightmare and then nine episodes of the third season. And that was just a few months ago, right? That's, I really wish they would have said like, oh yeah, a few years ago, something like that. Even though for some reason it never did anything with it, uh, Kirk Connors is able to hang on to a piece of the symbiote. So anyways, Eddie Brock, he wants the symbiote suit off him and uh, they finally do that. And then they have the most awkward kiss uh, probably in all of animation. Madam Web reveals to Spider-Man that Carnage is in fact waiting at Lieutenant Terry Lee's house because he needs a few more souls. And this is honestly where Carnage has never looked better. And I really wish, again, they would have kind of taken this scene and gone, let's do that with a, a Carnage. At least given him a new head portrait, right? So at the end of the day, he ends up getting Terry Lee's soul. Carnage goes after Spider-Man, gives up, Midway through, because Dr. Kafka shows up and ends up taking her soul as well. Not only takes her soul, but then uh, takes her back to Dormammu's lair for whatever reason as well. And back at Dormammu's lair, we have Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Venom. They all team up, which as a kid blew my mind. And uh, they web up Mordo, which I always thought in this scene, which I had to freeze frame it. I thought Iron Man was holding a piece of the webbing as well, which would have been really funny. I'm glad they didn't do that. They attack Mordo, Carnage throws that soul urn into the portal, and then ends up bringing Dormammu back. It's a little bit anticlimactic, however, the battle ensues, and uh, yeah, you can mimic that pretty dang good on your shelf now. Even though, I'll tell you, I got an Iron Man and a War Machine video uh, coming up, so get ready for that. It fits it a little bit better. Spider-Man's like, you know what, I'm just going to re-rattle this uh, techno jargon and suck Dormammu back into his dimension. All the souls get instantly transferred back to all the victims. So that's good. We know they're not dead. 
Terry Lee's not dead. Kafka's not dead. Carnage kind of starts killing Spider-Man. Whatever he's doing, he's doing some damage. And just to kind of see the size comparison between the animated Spider-Man and then the Venom figure, he fits in rather well. He's supposed to be shorter than Venom. He's around the same size as Spider-Man. So in either case, they've done a good job in terms of the heights. But, uh, you know, the likeness is just kind of vaguely there. And now to kind of conclude everything, Eddie Brock accepts Venom and Dormammu gets sucked into the portal, right? And then Iron Man and Spider-Man are like, oh, uh, what's that? how come the portal thing's not closing? Oh, he must have a psychic link to Carnage or whatever. So they throw Carnage in the portal and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to take Kafka with me. And of course, Venom's not going to have that. So Dormammu, Carnage, and Venom all go into the portal and I was like man I really wish they could have kept Venom around I was always kind of disappointed that portal closes and then Iron Man smashes the device which is kind of a funny thing where Spider-Man goes hey yeah yeah, that's a Stark property and he goes "Ah, if uh, Tony Stark has a problem he can take it up with me the two-parter ends with Madam Webb telling Spider-Man he's about to face a horror a horror beyond belief it wasn't just carnage he's got something else awaiting for him so to really look at this figure there's nothing crazy in terms of the articulation he does have pins he's a straight reuse he does have a little bit of animated look to him it's not the best it's also not the worst but i do wish that they would have taken just a little bit more time and made him just a little bit more animation accurate am i happy to have this carnage yes For those of you that are not Spider-Man the Animated Series fans, I would say this would be a total pass because you already have this figure. He's definitely more in tune with Spider-Man the Animated Series. Now, in kind of going backwards, we have the Alien Costume Saga, or how it was kind of listed on VHS, the Venom Saga. But it's the Alien Costume Saga. Come on. So... I really don't have too much to say about the alien costume Spider-Man. He does come with a couple extra hands, which is nice. So he is a couple wall crawling hands, which has the nice white square. He's got web whipping hands, which again, in correlation with Spider-Man, the animated series, completely unnecessary because he doesn't shoot webbing out like that anymore. The actual alien costume, black costume Spider-Man is actually pretty cool. Again, we already have seen this figure a dozen times over but he has more of that animated blue sheen. And that's what I do like about it. It's not the best, especially on the back, because it completely just goes away. It has one little piece right there at the tippy top by his neck, but then that's it for the blue shading. He has a little bit of shading within the spider symbol, which is totally cool, but then I really wish they would have highlighted more on the back. Now, right here at the top of the head, I do like that they have some of those little crease forehead lines, which shows him kind of mad. Although I would have loved a little bit more blue on the actual face, much like this. A little bit of white would have been cool to really cell shade it. This one is more colored. To me, cell shading is more when they put a shadow to it, right? So you got all the blues along the arms. It kind of stops at the hands. And again, I really wish they would have continued it because it looks like separate pieces, unfortunately. Right here on the spider symbol, you have a little bit of the highlighted shadow, which totally works because in most of the scenes, he does have that on the spider symbol. I do appreciate what they were doing there. I don't think it looks the best, but at least there's a little bit more of the animated series to it, right? So I can appreciate what they did, but the cell shading really isn't their thing. I don't think they've quite perfected that just yet. He does lots of articulation if you're interested, especially in the arms to kind of get the web flipping going, even though it does come out like right around here. Sometimes it came out on the white square just once. It's kind of all over the place. And that to me is one of the big aspects that's missing. He should have had some kind of clip on webbing that he could have fired out from the white square. So that would have been kind of cool. Now you can put him in the get back here shocker pose, which is totally awesome. Again, how awesome would it have been if it, these two were in the VHS box? You could have had a great name for that box right there. But again, because of the hands that were supplied, posing is kind of limited. I would have rather had something that, item holding hands, something like that, something to really battle the shocker. Like if he's going to take one of those busted pieces of the church chapel and break his electroshock devices. Or even better would be to give him an actual Prometheum X rock 
That would have been nuts. That way, if they ever do an Alistair Smythe, well, he'll have something to study finally. It's little things like that really add to these types of animated shows. Little nuances, little accessories like that really bring out the characters. And going forward in the whole Spider-Man animated VHS retro series, that's the kind of accessories I really want to see. And in all honesty, yeah, things like that should have been included in this box set because it really would have elevated the figure. Now, some of the highlights is this time around, he's completely pinless, so that's nice to see. And he has toe articulation. His toe articulation really doesn't do anything for me, but the pinless looks good. At least there's a little bit of a change to it. Lots of articulation, butterfly joints. It's the usual Marvel Legends articulation. If you've seen one, yeah, you know exactly what to expect. Now, in terms of looking at what's come before and then seeing what's come out now, I'll tell you again over and over, unless you're a huge Spider-Man the Animated Series fan, there really isn't anything new here for you. I do like how they changed the color red from this Carnage to now the animated one, but I like the old Carnage better because I think he has a lot more black. Sure, he's got more of the stylized animation black to this one, but it really is kind of lacking in a lot of the situation. So it's kind of a mixed bag. The alien costume Spider-Man really all depends if you want it pinless or if you want some of the blue shading. You can get him into these poses where Spider-Man calls forth the alien symbiote, which is still one of my favorite scenes from that three-parter that is so dang cool. And I always love that. And again, kind of posing him when he's trying to outrun the cops, but he doesn't have any webbing and I really wish that he did. So try to work out something with that and get him some webbing uh, going. Now, just before we conclude, I want to point out that the extra blue really do make for a cool looking animated Spider-Man here. The previous Red Hulk wave from way back when, the Target exclusive, has been one of my favorite black costume Spider-Mans for the longest time. But it's very much the comic book look with just a light smattering spray of the blue. But really, in whichever figure you go with, you'll have a decent enough looking black costume Spider-Man. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro's Marvel Legends Spider-Man, the animated series, the VHS 2-pack, featuring the alien costume Spider-Man and Carnage. Say that all in one go. Overall, it's kind of a mixed bag with what they've been releasing for actual Spider-Man the Animated Series figures. We already know that the next two sets will include an actual Animated Series Doc Ock and Aunt May, and the third set will include the Green Goblin and Mary Jane. So, we are getting a lot more on-model Spider-Man the Animated Series figures, and I really couldn't be happy with it. This isn't the greatest start to the VHS collection, but I am thoroughly looking forward to the next sets. I am very excited for those. But as always, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man, the animated series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, which VHS 2-pack would you like to see them make? For me, you got to have a J. Jonah Jameson and you got to have an animated chameleon. Those are high on my list. Also the Vulture. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.